Hello there, my fellow teachers. Earlier this week, I hosted a webinar where I spoke about online learning or remote learning. Um, I shared some of the um, experiences that I've had over the past 10 years, lessons that I've learned, as well as some of my favorite technology that I use currently in my online classes. Um, if you haven't been able to check that out yet, I'm going to link it up into the, um, the cards here, so that should pop up there for you. Um, but for those of you that were there and attended, I did promise you some additional information. Unfortunately, we ran out of time and I wasn't able to share with you my favorite program that I use this year to help with student engagement, and that is Nearpod. So today, I want to share that program with you um, and hopefully you get as excited as I am um, about this program and what it can do for not only engaging students online, but also when you guys go back to your classrooms. Let's pop right into the computer and take a look. Nearpod is a student engagement platform that can be used in both the remote classroom as well as a brick and mortar classroom face to face. The concept is very simple. A teacher creates a presentation that contains interactive activities like quizzes, polls, videos. It can even have images or drawing boards. You can introduce web content. The, the possibilities are endless. The first step in getting started with Nearpod is to sign up for an account, and you can do that by going to the, directly to the website nearpod.com. Once you've signed up, you will be able to get access to your Nearpod dashboard. The dashboard is where you will be able to find your library of Nearpod presentations that you've created. You'll also be able to access um, the library of resources provided by Nearpod. Um, there are, those are pre-made presentations that you can access. Some of them are free, um, others are paid for, and the library is searchable based on topic or whether it's free or paid. You are able to create a brand new Nearpod lesson directly from the Nearpod dashboard. However, let me demonstrate to you my favorite way of doing that, and that is through using the Google Slide add-on for Nearpod. For all of my online Zoom sessions, I have a Google slide deck that outlines all of the activities for the session, uh, exactly what it is that we're going to do, and it breaks it down. One of the benefits of Nearpod is that it actually has a Google slide add-on that I have incorporated into my account. And so I can go back to all of the previous Google slide decks that I've prepared for my classes, and I don't have to completely reinvent the wheel. Instead, I'm able to take some of those activities that I used to do in a different way and I can insert a Nearpod activity right into my Google Slide Deck. There are a large variety of the different types of activities you can add to your slide deck for students to do throughout the class time that you plan. Um, I'm going to only demonstrate a few of my favorites, um, but as you can see, all those different items listed on the right-hand side, those are all different types of activity slides that you can add to your slide deck. The first one I'm gonna add here is what we call a collaboration board. Um, and this is actually really neat because um, when you display this to the, the students, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit, um, you get to see the interaction happening is that you can do like a brainstorming session um, where students are posting up their ideas and as they come up, everyone on the Nearpod um, session is able to see those as they pop up. You are able to add a title to uh, let students know, you know the general idea of what it is that you're doing. Uh, there's another section where you can be more descriptive with what exactly the instructions are. Um, you can actually even choose um, an image to go along with uh, whatever the collaboration board is all about. So, um, for example, if you're doing brainstorming on colors, you could choose something where it was, um, you know, a color that represented what you're doing. Um, 
I use the collaboration board for my prayer wall um, in the morning um, and so students will put up prayer requests and things like that and so I have an image to go along with that. Um, there's lots of choices for how you can design that. There are even a number of different backgrounds for you to choose from um, for what the, the background uh, looks like for the brainstorming session or whatever type of session it might be. Um, and then once you've chosen all of those elements, you simply save it and um, it will populate into your Google slide deck. The next type of Nearpod activity I like to use often is uh, the one that's called Draw It. Um, and this one has so many different potential uses. Um, for example, um, you could use it for math questions. You could use it for like if you're doing art. Um, I, I mean, there are so many different things that you could do. Um, you could even use it for example, I've used it in my language arts class before um, to have students show me their proofreading marks. Um, so there are lots and lots and lots of ways that you can use this. There is a place for you to provide written instructions for students if you need to. Um, you can even add a timer. So if you want to limit the time that they are working on this activity, there is a timer that you can use. You can also add reference material and this could be maybe a PDF or a YouTube video or an image. Um, you can add that reference material, whatever it might be. You can also upload a background image or you can leave it blank. So if you leave it blank, it's just a white screen, like a whiteboard that students can draw on. But you can also upload a background image. So for example, say you're using it for math. Uh, you could upload a background image that has the, the math question on it. And so they, um, they have it to work on there. Or maybe they're doing graphing. You can upload a background of a graph paper. The options are limitless. It's, it's really just your own imagination that limits us with, uh, with this type of task. There are so many different ways that we can use it um, for student engagement. The field trip activity is a really neat one. If you want to take your kids on a virtual field trip, um, that's a really neat one. It incorporates 360 degree um, photos of various places. Um, there's a fill in the blank activity that you can use and it's exactly as you would expect. Um, you put sentences in with missing words and, and students can fill in those blanks. Um, the, the matching activity is great too. It's, um, you can have kids match terms and definitions or words to a picture, lots of options for that one. The open-ended questions activity um, poses a question to the students and they're able to type in their responses. It's great for mixing things up. Um, you know, oftentimes I like to have a discussion with my class, but you know, that doesn't meet the needs of all the students. And so from, for some of those students that might be more shy, um, this open-ended question um, allows them the time to be able to process their thoughts um, and, and type it in and provide their response to a question instead of a whole group discussion. The next one that I'm going to demonstrate here is the Nearpod 3D slide. Uh, this one's quite awesome actually because uh, there's lots of different items and areas to choose from, uh, but what this does is it, it gives a 3D picture of some type of object. So for example, say you were studying the cell and you wanted to give the kids a chance to interact with, with a cell, investigate it a little bit more, um, you could use Nearpod 3D. Um, and uh, they're able to um, take a look at you know exactly what this cell looks like in 3D. So it's not so two-dimensional anymore. It's not just a textbook they're looking at. They're able to see it in 3D. The list of Nearpod activities are extensive, and so I mean that would be something that you'd want to go in and play around with. That's what I did when I first uh, found the program. Uh, went in and played around with it, created a few different ones just to see what it would look like. Um, but you can do things like polling uh, slides, you can do uh, quiz slides, there's even a game that you can play with students, it's called Time to Climb. Um, I know my, my kids love that one, so between Time to Climb and Kahoot, uh, those are the games that my, my online kids just absolutely love. Once you're finished designing all your slides and your activities, um, you go down to the button that says save and go to Nearpod. And once you click on that, it will uh, bring you to the Nearpod website directly to your dashboard um, where it will show that it is saving the um, Google slide deck that you have just created. And once it's all saved there, you can launch a live lesson directly from there. 
When you launch a session, you're given a number of options for how to share it with students. You can share it email, uh, give them a link directly to Google Classroom, or whatnot, but I actually use the, the code um, to join. Um, and what I have students do is I have them go to nearpod.com and they enter in this code in order to join the session. So let's flip to the student view to see what that would look like and what students do to join using a code. They're asked to identify themselves, so place their name, um, and there is an optional section there for other, a nickname or whatnot, um, and then join session. With my students, when I first introduced this, I always made sure to be clear that they, need to be, they needed to be identified. So it couldn't be some crazy name that they put in. It had to be uh, something that they could be identified with. I'm gonna move into a side-by-side -side demonstration here so that we can see both the teacher view as well as the student view of what's going on. This first screen here is the brainstorm slide that we created, that very first one, um, where we decided to have them brainstorm about you know their favorite color, the color that they liked. Um, and so on the left, we see the teacher view of what things look like and on the right is the student view. On these collaborative boards, uh, what students are able to do is they're able to type in a response. So for example, they can put in the, uh, the color that they like the best or whatever it might be. Um, they are actually also able to add pictures to their posts if they would like to. And it's a Google Safe search that, um, that they're able to use there to find a picture that, um, that they like. Um, and so they can um, uh, put that in and post it up. And as they post it, um, what we're able to see is that um, the, the picture as well as the, um, the response that came through. And for all the other students, um, it's a nameless post that comes through. So they don't know who makes what post. But on the teacher side, you are able to see exactly who is posting what. Now when it comes to these activities, the teacher has full control over the speed at which we move through. Uh, so whenever the activity is finished, the teacher, teacher will click on um, one of those blue arrows. So those are back and forth arrows. Um, and so as we're moving and progressing forward, they'll click on the forward arrow to move to the next activity. And you'll notice that on the student end, once the teacher presses that forward button, the slide for the student changes as well. This next activity is the draw it activity or the, the whiteboard activity. This is the one where you can have a blank background or you can provide a background. In our example here, we just have a blank uh, background and we're you know, asking the instructions are to draw a stick man. Um, and so you'll notice on the student side, they have a number of different drawing tools uh, as well as tools for bringing in pictures and, and whatnot. Um, and so, what the students are able to do is they're able to get started and they do some drawing and as they are drawing you notice that on the teacher end what they're doing starts to show up so that we can monitor the work that's going on we can see what it is that they are doing and once the students have finished they can press the submit button and then it will be submitted to the teacher Another really neat feature about this is that um, once those drawings have been submitted to the teacher, um, what the teacher can do is um, share with the other students what their classmates have been working on. And once again, this can be done without showing names attached to work. So if there's a bit of an embarrassment factor for anything, that does certainly help to calm any fears about having work shared with others. Finally, we're gonna take a look at the 3D model of the cell uh, that we placed as our very last slide activity um, in our Nearpod presentation. Um, and you can notice here that once that's brought up in front of the students, they're able to move it around, they can zoom in, they can zoom out, um, and they can investigate um, what the cell looks like. Um, and this is a really neat feature because there's so many different um, 
options for what we can take a look at so the cell isn't the only thing. I, I did an activity not too long ago with my grade eights. We're studying body systems and so we took a look in depth at some of the different body systems that they were and they could zoom in, zoom out, they could uh, move it all around and investigate. Um, very helpful for uh, as hands-on as you can get in particularly in a remote learning situation. There we have it, a little taste of what Nearpod can do for you and your students, online or in a brick and mortar school. For those of you that are still working through um, the prospect of having to do remote learning over the next little while, um, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I have a number of tutorials in the works that are coming up. We're gonna be taking a look at Zoom for online sessions um, and Google Classroom. Uh, we're gonna do a deep dive into both of those. So I have a number of different tutorials that are scheduled to come out over the next uh, week or so. So if you are in that position, if you're looking for resources and needing help, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you get um, notified every time that I post something new and provide new content. Have a great day, guys.